What I'm going to do in this demonstration is I'm going to take you through our MRP functionality. What's MRP? Well, that's Materials Requirements Planning or Materials Resource Planning. Now, MRP is really applicable if you are managing inventory items. The good thing about our MRP functionality is it handles your requirements whether or not you purchase your inventory in or you manufacture your inventory. And we do have the production capability, which you'll see in another demonstration. So let's dive in and take a look at exactly how the functionality works. So once you're inside the MRP uh, option inside SAP Business One, you'll see there's a couple of things which we have. The first thing is your forecasts. The second is your MRP wizard. And the third is the order recommendation. So let's talk about each one of those in detail. So what you need to do when you're looking at your MRP, the purpose of MRP is to look at your, if you like, your consumption patterns of product. And then on the basis of those consumption patterns and some other information you put in about your product, the MRP will then go ahead and tell you what you're going to need to order. Now, the MRP functionality in SAP Business One also has the ability to then generate the subsequent documents. But one of the things that you'll need to have to help you work out how much you're going to need is a forecast. So with SAP Business One, you can create as many of these different forecasts as you like. So when I create a new forecast, first thing I need to do is create a forecast code. So this forecast I'm going to do, I'm going to create a forecast for my consumption for the Christmas quarter of the year. So I'm going to make this my Q4 Christmas forecast. So that's my code, Q4 Christmas. And my forecast name is fourth quarter forecast. And then I put my starting date for that. And that's going to be October the 1st. And my ending date for that is going to be December the 31st. So that's great. So I've got three months in my quarter. Now you'll notice in here, I can, if I want to, I can start forecasting daily or weekly. But in this particular instance, just for the sake of the demonstration, I'm going to forecast on a monthly basis. So all I do now is I put in my inventory item and then I specify how much I think I'm going to consume in each one of those months. So then when I run my MRP wizard, which we'll do in a minute, I can pick up this particular product forecast. Now I'm going to add a couple more products here just for the sake of the exercise. And I'm going to make it exactly the same. Important to note that one of the things that makes SAP Business One so powerful is that not only do we have the standard functionality built into the product, but we have a number of uh, software solution partners who build complementary solutions for SAP Business One. So if the functionality that's here in the standard forecasting and the standard MRP is not enough, there are a number of solutions which are available which plug in seamlessly into SAP Business One to give you even more rich and a greater degree of complexity in the forecasting process. So I just thought I'd mention that. But for the majority of our 30,000 customers, they tend to find that the standard functionality we make available is enough. But you do have options, and that's an important thing to remember. So there's my two products that are in my forecast, and now I'll say add. So that's my forecast created. Now I can create as many different forecasts as I want, because I might then want to start doing different what-if scenarios, and I can do that using the MRP wizard. So let's go and take a look at the MRP wizard right now. Again, in some of the other demonstrations, I've introduced the concept of the wizard and what wizards are. It's a simple way to make it easy for you to perform repetitive tasks and specify some parameters. So the MRP wizard is no different. First thing it asks me is ask me, do you want to create an MRP scenario? So I'll give it my scenario name. So I'll say this is my Christmas forecast scenario. I can give it a description if I want, but right now my scenario name is, is pretty much all I need because that's pretty descriptive. So then I'll say next. I can give it a description in here. So this is my Christmas forecast scenario. 
And what I'm able to do is if I want to use this uh, scenario for doing what if simulations, all I need to do is flag this as a simulation um, scenario. So it's not going to allow me to go ahead and actually create orders off the back end of it. Now, next question is going to ask me, what's your planning horizon? Well, how, how do you want to look at your data? Do you want to look at your data requirements by day or by month? Well, I'm going to say, or, or sorry, by day or by week. So I'm going to view my data in terms of the weeks. And then I'm going to say my starting date is October the 1st. And my ending date is December the 31st. And so my report length, it's automatically calculating out and it's rounding it down for me to the calendar weeks, is uh, a 14 week period. Now I'm also able to specify some parameters here like the maximum cumulative lead time, what's the maximum lead time I want to allow uh, across my forecast scenario. I'm also able to create what we call a holiday table, which records all the dates uh, that are not working, not considered as working days. And I can consider that when I'm looking at not only my production planning, but also my purchase planning. Because I need to factor in, if I'm going to produce items, that um, the factory or the production line is going to be closed on those days. All right? Or I can just leave that unticked and say so I don't really care too much about the holiday table because in Q4 we work seven days a week, for example, but you will know what's going to work for you. Then what you can do is you can then specify which items you want to include in your scenario. So you're able to really have as many different scenarios as you want and run each of those scenarios at a different time. We give you that flexibility. In this case, I'm going to say I want to see it for all my items. And then in your display preference, how do you want to see the items? Do you want to see them in assembly sequence if you are manufacturing? Do you want to see them in item number or item description or item group? I'm going to see them in item number uh, order. Do you want to display items that don't have requirements? Well, I'm going to leave that as it is. And then I can now save my scenario now. What it's telling me here is that the start date cannot be later than today. So what it's not going to allow me to do is actually have a start date on my scenario that is, uh, beyond, uh, that is beyond today's date. And the reason why I put in an incorrect date was just to show you how the system automatically knows and understands the business rules around MRP. So it's not going to allow you to do something that's going to give you an incorrect result. So I'm going to change that to today's date. And then I'm going to change my ending date again. I'm going to just dive out here and look at December of 2011. I'm going to set it to December the 31st. Again, it's just double checking and saying that's how long we're looking at in our, uh, in our scenario. And I've got my maximum cumulative lead time. Again, I can specify that. In this case, I'm now going to save my scenario and our scenario is now saved in there. And the next thing I can do is I can also start to put some additional information in here about my data source for my MRP. So I can specify which warehouses do I want to look at as in terms of which warehouses have my stock. Then also I can specify which of my commitments in the system already do I want to contemplate or consider in my MRP forecast. Do I want to look at the purchase orders that are already in the system? Do I want to incorporate the sales orders that are already in the system? Do I want to look at the production orders that have already been created? The purpose of me going through at this level of detail is to show you how flexible the MRP functionality is because you want to have a lot of um, different parameters that you can specify when you are running your MRP uh, scenarios. Now, what I'm also able to do now is pull in my fourth quarter forecast and factor that in as well. So not only is it looking at the actual orders that are in the system, I can now pull in my forecast and get it to look at 
the, um, the forecast and factor that in. So not just actual orders, but what I'm expecting to have happen. The next step is, of course, to click on the Run button and allow the MRP scenario to run. So then, once my MRP scenario is run, I'm able to go and specify my particular item numbers uh, or look at the specific items that are in there. So I've put in all of my parameters now, and the next step, obviously, is to run my MRP scenario. So now you see I've got my MRP results. So this is now going to show me exactly what I need to do, what my shortfall is, and when I need to place that order. So right now, you can see in week 23, I've got a real problem. I've got a 355 um, units shortfall. If I want to drill down and look at that in more detail, I can just expand the field out, and it shows me everything that I've got. So I've got my initial inventory. I've got any receipts. I've got my gross requirements, which is right now I need 1,200 in total. Uh, and I've got my final inventory. So from here, I can now get the system to make a recommendation as to what I should do. So I click on View Recommendations, and you'll see that the system is suggesting that I need to go ahead and I need to place a purchase order. So from here, I'm able to go and generate that purchase order, but you'll notice that that function is not available for me. Why is that? You'll remember that when I started creating this scenario that I flagged it as a simulation. Flagging it as a simulation stops me from automatically creating the purchase orders and the production orders. So now I've got this and I can view my results. I'm able to um, take those recommendations and then on the basis of that decide what I'm going to do. Now I can finish and the beauty of the way that our wizards work with creating those scenarios is that I'm able to quickly and easily go back and call up that scenario and this time I untick the simulation, I run it exactly the same way, I now get a result, I view my recommendations, I can now save my recommendations, and when I finish, I can now take that order recommendation, which is now in here, and you can see there is the order recommendation that's been created, and it's recommending that I need to purchase 355 uh, units of this particular product from my preferred vendor, if I want to, I can now go and make some changes to that purchase order before I generate it. In this case though, I'm just gonna say go ahead and create. And I update that, one new purchase order was created and now I can go back in and print out that purchase order and I know I'm gonna have the right amount of stock uh, for what I need uh, to supply my customers as quickly as possible. So that's a quick overview of the MRP functionality. Of course, if I had products in there that were manufactured, what it would also allow me to do, it would allow me to then trigger off a production order. And we're gonna take you through the production, the production processes in uh, another one of our demonstrations.